Boom. Hello, hello, hello. And we're back in business. It's the Barber's Table back with another video. Welcome to another classic. Thanks for sitting with us. Um, Today we have a haircut. Why am I talking this way? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But I would like to say, got some exciting videos for you guys coming up next week. I will be dropping video after video. Don't take my word for it. Stay tuned. I'm looking at these comments and I'm seeing, oh snap, Kev's back. Every time I drop a video, it's like a comeback season. You know what I'm saying? I gotta, st I, I, I don't like that. I don't, I don't like that. So what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be dropping videos so that I never have to hear. Thanks for coming back. Yo, Kev, I didn't think you are gonna be dropping any videos. Yo, bro, you still here? Like, I just gotta wake up and smell the flowers and just say, you are not consistent. That's what I need to do. Just need to wake up. <laughs> Today's video is a special one because I've heard a few people talk about this in the comments and the Instagram DMs and some of my uh, Instagram comments as well. So today's video is gonna be about making your haircuts faster, improving in the speed of your haircuts. Today I was gonna be doing it on a straight hair client and I think a few things need to know before you you cut hair period, just to make sure you're going at an efficient speed. When you look at the cut, when you look at the, the your canvas, you have to know where you're going. Ultimately, when you do haircuts for a long time, you can see a client and know what hairstyle you're gonna give them and then have a general idea of how you're gonna get there. Majority of why you guys get have a problem with fading, because you're doing things unnecessarily, going over the same thing over and over again. Your system or your process is a little confusing and, and counterproductive. You, you do one thing and you make it harder on yourself. Like for one, for instance, when, when I was at Barbican, Basio made a great point about how people use, uh, try to blend a one into a two with a one and a half, um, one and a half closed. A one and a half closed is closer than a two. So people are trying to take out a line that's closer than the line. Is that what it was? Anyway, but you get, you get what I'm saying. Certain systems work together and you gotta make sure that your system is efficient and it makes sense going step by step. And this one, the system is showing you is it's fading down. And this is clearly probably one of the fastest ways to fade, I think. Ooh, audio change. I'm using my mic right now. My blue snowball. But anyway, we're going to get straight into this haircut. Like I said, we're doing straight down and this is some straight hair. If you want to see it on curly hair, extra hair, extra curly hair, black people hair, basically, then um, leave a comment down below and like, comment. I'll show you different ways to do that as well. Um, personally, I would like a different style format of me just talking in real time and showing you guys how to do it. But since I'm in the shop during work hours, you know, this is the best way for me to get it done. But right now I'm just wetting the hair and what wetting the hair does is allows it to be more movable. If you notice how the hair is just kind of falling and flopping, it's more controllable. I can create a harsh, uh, more precise line that way. So I just kind of wet it enough for me to make that separation and now I'm doing the shape if you um I'm gonna put up the stages here in my mind for what I do for the haircut I start with the shape then after I shape I do the fade and after I fade I line up cross check style and finish so here I'm just doing the shape and if you can see um I only put the clipper right by the parietal ridge which is like right where the 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 top side of the head where the where the angle of the hair the head changes i didn't go down by the neck area by the ear because that part of the haircut is going to be shorter i don't need to cut that with a two which is what i used here i'm using clip over comb just to refine that line refine that shape so i'll just fade straight into that you can see how it's straight now i'm using a one and a half and i'm fading down what i'm paying attention to is the lightness i'm making it lighter i don't want to go too high i just know the fade goes from dark to light now this is a little more complex um form of fading that uh, most people most beginners aren't really used to so this is why i'm kind of trying to show you this like in a slower way now i'm just using a one open and as you can see the fade is lightening up and there's going to be zero lines created here i'm just controlling my lightness i'm legitimately putting the lightness where I want it to be. This is the one close, which is one from the one open to the one close. What's cool about this way of fading is you don't have to spend time. You don't have to spend time taking out a line, switching up things. Like once I'm done with my two, I'm done. Once I'm done with my half, I'm done. Like I'm going straight down and I'm done. This is my close all the way. I'm gonna finish this with a 1 16th guard halfway. I could finish it with 
a um, no guard open, but I'm typically just taking a two, going from open to close and going down and just controlling the lightness the entire time. Um, like I said, I wish I could do this in real time because it's kind of, I would say it's the same on the other side, but I know it can really trick up some people like seeing a different um, side of the haircut. It's a, it's a comb over. For now, like this whole haircut right here, it just took 20 minutes. Cause now I'm, I'm basically done with the fade. Like with my steps, you can still see some dark spots, especially right there around the parietal ridge. After you're done with the entire haircut, you can come back and refine those things. That's another issue when it comes to the speed. A lot of people try to do the refinement and the haircut all at once. And it's hard to see the finished product when the product isn't nearly finished. There, I just, you know, cut the length to the desired length and I comb all the hair for it. And then I do the separations. When you do parting the hair or combing it away like that is best when you, per you, you comb it and you, how do I say this? You comb in the direction you want to part it. So I'm combing, I combed it forward because I wanted to make those parts side by side and I perpendicularly separated it. Now I'm picking up hair and then I forgot I cut it in the front. So I go to the front. And now you can see the pieces that I previously cut and that's my dye. You can see I, I go up until like the hair disappears at the front of my fingertip, then take the rest off where my knuckles are. And after you do that, this is when you just want to do the hair all the same length on the top. All the same length on top. And um, this is layering the hair because when the hair falls down, they all fall at different points. Now I'm just picking up all the hair and typically a haircut in this shop, like for my time schedule, just a full haircut is scheduled for 45 minutes. I can do this cut, I did this exact cut in 20 minutes. The extra time is there for like, say if somebody wanna wash, or if you want some extra styling, just give me some some room for more, but overall I do that, and if I can take more people, I just take more people. And here I decided not to like speed it up, so you guys see, I'm talking to him and stuff, but so you guys see it in real time. It's really hard for you guys to understand the way something is done if I just speed it up. So now you can see all that hair coming off because I'm looking at my knuckles and I'm waiting till the hair kind of meets that point. And I use my fingers as a guideline or a guard or, or something like that where I point and hold the, the, the hair for where I cut it. Let me just take it up that side and after I'm finished with that side, I go to the, the other side of his, the top of his head and just even that out. I know it can get a lot, a little frustrating with whether it be shears or fades. I would encourage you guys just to keep trying, keep going because I can, I can still hit like what I call levels of Nirvana when it comes to fading. Um, where I think I'm really good at something and I learn something new and it really changes the game. And that, that kind of, that process kind of continues to happen. But you can only benefit and that, that process only happens for you when you're consistent and you continually keep going because you don't know what you don't know and you, you're not sure what you're about to learn. So you gotta keep an open mind just so that it can really, can really absorb things. But I would also say to be mindful of the difference between something that would improve your, your process, something that you need to learn, something you need to do, and something that's just gimmicky and just somebody else's process or, you know, just there's a difference between right and wrong and yours and mine, you know? And I think it's really important that you as a beginner barber, you know, soak up all you can. I'm not going to tell you to like be, hold some form of discretion for different like ways to learn but i will say everybody's not teaching you something you need to learn um and i think the sooner you find that out is the sooner you won't waste time and uh yeah just just take just take things for what they are and i'm sorry i'm off screen right now but 
so we, we talking, we chilling. But yeah, take things for what they are. There's nothing worse than somebody saying you're doing something wrong when they're just doing it a different way. You know, the result is the result. There are efficient ways to do things. You do things faster, you do things better, you can do things wrong, but like you gotta know when it's wrong. And here I'm just connecting with my fingers, the side and the top. and my they call it cat and mouse wherever my roller brush goes my blow dryer is right behind it and I think it's also very 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 important to realize that in every single part of the stages when you start with a, a shape um, shape fading shape up retouch which is you know cross check and uh finish style and finish you are styling and fin you are styling the hair in every single facet of the haircut you know don't think one thing is separate from another even from the way you part affects the way the end look will be the way you part the way you cut the way you shape the way you fade all of it it's all connected and for me um Oh, wow, that, I like the way that image looks. For me, like, I try and make everything look pretty, make everything look controlled. And I think that's what that's what makes the end look look pretty and controlled. You gotta you can tell if somebody's process has been off by looking at the way their finished result is. For here, if you look at the side of his head, if you look right above my middle finger, you can see a dark spot. And that's fine. Um, the fade looks decent um, Still can use some work, but all that work will be done After we finish you can see it better now that you're shaping it up. We can see the imperfections of the fade and Again, this is the more complex way to fade if I'm fading. This is what I'd call a, a, a half fade or maybe a one fade since I didn't really go all the way on one a, Let's call it a three-fifths fade. <laughs> or like a, a three-fourths fade. Anyway. Um, what was I saying? Jeez, here I'm just wetting up the front just so that I can uh, I can blow dry it over. When you wet hair, you, you kind of like, it's like kind of like melting candles. And then you come back and heat it. And it freezes it just like when candles are cooling down. By the way, this kid is like, this kid is like 13, but he's a grown little kid, bro. We're talking about like, I remember, whoa, what are we talking about? I don't even know. He's like an artist, dope kid, dope kid. I, my, his name is lost on me, but he watches YouTube videos and everything. So if you see this, shout out to you, bro. Which I remembered your Instagram. Thanks for watching today's video. Hope you guys learned something. If you have any other questions, please drop them down below. And a few questions. One, I'm thinking, I really like this hat, right? I really like this hat. I was thinking of taking my logo, putting on this hat. I was gonna make a few for myself and for some people who would be interested in getting them. I'm gonna be roll, rolling out some more clothing, making some limited to, uh, limited edition to endorse or like make these videos more better for more camera gear and all these different things just to really help support this channel. You know what I'm saying? I really wanna grow, grow it to be bigger than what it is create this and on top of that i'm looking into creating online courses to go really in depth for people who care more about certain things whether it be camera work like photography videography or specific things like sheer work so sign fading and all these different things if you have an idea or a thought or what you want to see from me in an online course put it down in the comments section below send me an email send me a dm and let me know um but for now that's all for today see you guys in the next video thanks for watching